even just the act of caring for yourself and loving yourself, it sets you up for success. Welcome to Inspiration Rising. My name is David Trotter, and I'm a business growth consultant. I'm passionate about helping business owners just like you rise above your biggest barriers to reach your greatest goals, all without the paralyzing overwhelm, feeling all alone, or wondering what the heck to do next. I'm a former pastor and a serial entrepreneur who's passionate about personal growth because that's what's helped me cultivate peace in my life and empowered me to love my amazing wife, Laura, of 26 years and our two almost grown kids. So if you're all about business, personal growth, and peace in your life, you're in the right place. I'm super glad that you're here. Hello, friends, and welcome back to Inspiration Rising. It's great to have you with me today. Today's guest is Christina Ellis. She's the co-founder and CEO of Lit Rituals. Yes, check it out at litrituals.com. They provide products to help you with ritual self-care brought to you by Mother Earth. Okay, so these are all sorts of things that you light and even smoke and even, I don't know, display, all kinds of beautiful things. There's no tobacco or cannabis. It's all herbs. So it's a very interesting uh, set of products that they have created. And so I am just excited for you to hear my conversation with Christina, not only about how they got into creating lit rituals, but how they've expanded their business through wholesale. And if you are wanting to start your own e-commerce business or provide your uh, products through wholesale markets, uh, this is a great way. I mean, she provides all sorts of nuggets of wisdom through our conversation, and you're going to just love her. So let's jump into my conversation with Christina Ellis. Well, Christina, thank you so much for taking some time to hang with me today. I appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to be here. Yeah. So I want to hear all the crazy backstory because every entrepreneur has a backstory of how they got mm-hmm. into their business. Um, talk to me about your journey into starting lit rituals. Like, were you interested in spirituality type stuff growing up? I, ha- yeah, I have always been off and on. Um, I, it's kind of a crazy all over the place journey. Um, but I worked a lot and my background is like, pretty uh, intense sales environments, um, working for startups in the Bay Area, and, you know, pretty intense schools where you're working really, really hard all the time. And then your whole life starts over at the beginning of every month. So it's like, exhausting. And I just, I think I've always from a young age known that I wanted to work for myself in some capacity, but never uh, knew in what capacity. Um, but I've always, always been um, driven and working too hard for somebody else. And I think I just got to a point, well, actually (laughs) I got fired. (laughs) So I got fired from a startup in uh, Oakland, California, because uh, it was a startup and there was new management and I was new to my role. And, you know, I didn't have a huge, huge resume behind me just yet because it'd been a month, but it can be brutal. So they let me go along with a lot of other people. And then I think I thought at that moment, yeah, I want to be working for myself anyways. I'm breaking my back for working with small businesses, which was rewarding to me. I really enjoyed the people that I worked with, but it was, the environment was crazy and it it didn't allow for any, any self-care, any time for yourself, unless you wanted to, you know, sacrifice your work performance. So I think that was maybe the seed, the the seed. And it took me a couple wrong turns and correct turns and then, you know, all over the place to get to where we're at now. But um, that was the beginning of, okay, I actually am going to try and do something for myself. And at that moment, I thought, well, that's crazy to just dive, you know, right in. So I did, I still had a sales job. It was in a small, humble county town where, nothing like the Bay Area. You know, I had like a lot of autonomy and didn't, if I, you know, if I did a quarter of the work there, they were thrilled, (laughs) you know, so, so it allowed me to have a little bit more time to take care of myself and then focus on some of the goals that I wanted to uh, focus on. And at the time I was living with my best friend and co-founder of Light Rituals, 
Caitlin and we were both kind of doing our own thing. She has an herbalist background. And like I said, I have kind of like a sales, knew I always wanted to work for myself, but didn't really know how or what. And so at the time I was doing kind of just like a store themed around anything I liked, which sometimes (laughs) was great and sometimes wasn't. It was kind of like an Instagram e-commerce site where it was a lot of kind of random, quirky, feminist kind of stuff. And actually it started to just be like a huge headache and not, and I could feel like, oh, this isn't actually fulfilling to me at all. Um, And then Caitlin was doing her uh, herbal project at the time. So we were doing side by side, we were going to pop-ups and, you know, doing all the markets and Instagramming and all of this stuff. And so we lived together. And at one point we decided, why don't we do, if we're already doing these pop-ups together, like let's sell, sell some kind of collaboration and both of us have, um, you know, a passion for holistic and holistic living and natural products and wellness as a whole. Um, and so we decided, let's make a really clean burning candle for ourselves. Um, just try it out. It's fun. We're bored here in Humboldt. There's nothing to do. <laughs> so, so we just, that's how it started. And we're like, okay, let's bring these, can- the next pop-ups we do, let's bring these candles and see how they go. And then we just continue to do that. And it, we did that for way, way, way too long. And only uh, (laughs) September of last year, did we decide, let's cut out our single project and dedicate all of our time to this, because there was so much overlap. We just created this kind of like, huge mess where we can give a third of our energy here, a third of our energy here, and a third of our energy here. And they're all, and the goal is the same, right? Like, have time, ritual self-care, uh, take time for yourself in a healthy, meaningful way in three different businesses. So we just had a moment like, what are we doing? Let's combine this. And that was the best decision we ever did. And I wish we would have done it two, three years ago. <laughs> but that's kind of how we got right here where we are now. It was, it's like we were, we really merged right when the pandemic started. So okay. Kind of a crazy, crazy little journey with a lot of I twists and it. turns. I love it. And so the majority of things, like I on your website, you've got candles, you've got mm-hmm. uh, burn bundles, herbal smokes, right. and loose blends. Then you've got self care stuff, some home decor stuff. Uh, I mean, mm-hmm. it's mm-hmm. all centered around, as you said, self care, but like with a dose. I'm saying a heavy dose of woo woo spirituality. As a business owner, are you struggling with overwhelm, self-doubt, or procrastination? Well, if you listen to many experts, the number one way to rewire your brain is through meditation. And yet many of the people that I work with are passionate entrepreneurs who struggle to sit still long enough to even calm down their brain. Well, I've recently discovered the power of color flow meditation. It's a paint and play experience to help you rediscover the joy of business. My friend Super K and I want to invite you to a free one hour workshop called painting your way to your purpose, passion, and superpower. We're hosting it live on Wednesday, September 22nd, 2021 at 9 a.m. Pacific time, 12 noon Eastern via Zoom. It's absolutely free, but you do need to save your spot at www.paintingyourway.live. That's paintingyourway.live. The link is in the show notes. Hope to see you there. Totally. Yeah, totally. We, so both of us, uh, the way that Caitlin and I even came together and met each other, um, her and my sister did a yoga teacher training together. And then I've done my own, um, separately yoga teacher training as well. So to us, you know, like inner work, you'll see, like we have tea talks called inner work, like inner work is, and always will be important to us in some way. So there can be an element of spirituality. And I think a lot of our customers definitely uh, use our products in a spiritual way. But I also think um, for people who aren't spiritual or just think self-care is becoming more common and less about woo-woo spiritual chanting, you know, whatever people uh, associate it with and more just about a spirituality can just be, you know, there's so many definitions. Of course. So yeah, it can be, it can be spiritual, but it can also just be 
self-care. And like, I think a lot of the time we think about self-care or I know I can default to this and a lot of my friends can default to like thinking, oh, okay, uh, self, oh my God, it's been a busy week. Like time for self-care. Let's put a face mask on and, you know, I don't know, eat ice cream or whatever we do in self-care. But I think our goal with uh, Lit Rituals is making not kind of a, oh, let's fix the problems from this week. Let's like prep for the problems that we're all going to have for the rest of our uh-huh. life. And when you take time for yourself, whether it's spiritual or not, but even just the act of caring for yourself and loving yourself, you're, it sets you up for success. So instead of, oh, I mean, and, and I'm sure you've noticed like self-care is so buzzy right now. And it's like, you hear self-care trend this, self-care trend that, and nothing irks me more than hearing trendy because it re- that's like the opposite of what we want to do. It's right. like, we want self-care to be just like, just as ritualistic as brushing your teeth or, you know, do it like it should be. That's, that's when it works the best. Okay. So um, first of all, the name lit rituals is just awesome. And I love the crystals, part of the, <laughs> the icon and the logo um, of, of the products that you sell on your website. What percentage of these do you manufacture yourself almost every last one of them there are a couple items that we don't hand make ourselves but are handmade by partners um like the pipes we don't make those ourselves we partner with someone who does hand make those and it takes them so long and like good for them because <laughs> i don't think exactly. i could ever do that everything pretty much every let me i'm trying to think i want to no but i'm hearing that like, i would say the majority of things 95% here. Yeah. Like the matches, you probably don't manufacture the ma- matches. No, we don't manufacture the matches. We yeah. don't manufacture the pipes. And then, you know, we like through the pop-up market scene that we were on for so long, we met different wonderful right. makers. Like, and I don't even know if these are on our website right now, but they should be, and they will be. <laughs> There's these uh, gorgeous, like ceramic mouthpieces for herbal cigarettes or whatever you choose to smoke made by someone we met on the pop-up circuit, Brooklyn ceramics. So there, we do have little um, partnerships like that where we include different area businesses. And so um, when you, you guys were already creating these products on like separately. So you already had a a kind of a runway. You just brought it all Mm -hmm. together, the two partners. And yeah. And we refined it a little bit. Um, We refined it and kind of aimed it into the overall direction Caitlin was previously doing some other products. Some we kept, some we didn't. And same with mine. Some we kept, some we didn't. But yeah, we just kind of made it make sense because it was like the goal was the same. I'm looking at um, some of these products on here. And for those of you who are listening, you definitely have to check it out, litrituals.com. And the link will be in the show notes. Of course, you can swipe up on your phone and click it. But I'm looking at Cancer Large Burn Bundle. Now, this looks like a cool dried flower. Like, (laughs) they're beautiful. And you're telling me I'm going to burn these in I know. This is where we went. (laughs) A gorgeous burn wand to honor the cancer astrological sign of the zodiac. It's made with fragrant moon ruled herbs and flowers that correspond with the energy elements and character of cancer. Good Lord. This is just craziness. What do you, what do you, you want me to just burn? Some I didn't even, yeah, I know that's where we went wrong is they're so gorgeous that nobody wants to burn them, <laughs> but they are, I mean, when you burn them, when you can finally just let yourself burn them, it's amazing. It's like, it's incredible. They, they smell as gorgeous. There's no better air freshener. Really? It smells good. And that's how I feel. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you can take, uh, you can take a teensy sprig of lavender and just like totally reset the energy and the scent of the room. And it's a natural um, air cleanser, you know, purifies the air naturally much better than, you know, some of the other things we spray. Yeah. So. That nasty stuff out of a can. For those of you uh, that are listening or w- if you're watching on YouTube, you obviously see me lounging on a couch and uh, you might hear a vacuum. I, there's a vacuum happening in the background. There's a dog. <laughs> I'm at a client's house uh, doing this podcast. So it's not exactly the optimal scenario. Hopefully you don't hear too much of that. Um, okay. So I don't hear any of it. <laughs> okay. Well, good. that's good. Um, then I'm looking at, you have uh, the other thing that I wanted to ask about are like some sort of burn blend. It's just like this, like a 
looks like I'm burning sawdust or something. What is this? Um, pr- probably a loose smoke blend. Is that what you're yeah. talking about? Yeah. Yeah. What is a smoke yeah. blend? So just like we smoke tobacco or weed or oh. whatever, it's just an alternative to that. There's no tobacco, no weed, no CBD, nothing. It's just other smokable herbs that, um, you know, people have done this for like eons. It's just not as popular as tobacco, but, um, this was actually one of Caitlin's products from her, um, herbal line. And it was just born out of necessity for friends really who were trying to give up smoking, whether that was weed or tobacco or that just smoke socially. Like there are so many people that when they're out having a drink, they want to smoke, but they don't want to be inhaling carcinogens or, you know, all the, the many things that are not tobacco that come in mainstream cigarettes. So what we have in our herbal tea tokes is just all organic herbs, smokable herbs. And, uh, you know, they, they calm you down just kind of like that ritual, the people who just like the ritual of smoking, um, really gravitate to those products, whether that's the loose or we also have them like pre-rolled. Yeah. I see the cancer tea tokes. Mm hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That, and those are, so those are can for the Zodiac cancer, um, not sign. Get, like those are herbs yeah, that are called getting for. cancer when you're smoking it. Right. No, I know. It's like the, the worst <laughs> title. Uh, but what are your most popular products on the website? Our most popular products are probably the tea tokes and also the burn ones. Really? For More sure. Yeah. Candles. Okay. All right. Okay. So So, yeah, candles as well. So we have soy candles and beeswax candles. Our beeswax candles are also one of our our top sellers. But you, when you switch, so that's on our retail site, that's the best sellers. But then when you kind of hop over to the wholesale channel, the best sellers are uh, the candles first, um, cigarettes second. Uh, I, I think every month it's like a tie between the cigarettes and the burn bundles. So those three products are really like the top sellers on both sides. Okay. So... When a lot of people um, think about starting an online store or start thinking about selling their products, I think that a lot of people think, oh man, how am I going to make this product? How am I going to package it? How am I going to make it look cool? How am I going to, and that's the easy part. Like the easy part is actually creating the product. What you have done, which is amazing, is developed a significant following to buy the product. Like that's the hard part, right? It's not making it. Yes. It's you're totally right. (laughs) You're not in the business of making candles and tea tokes and all that. You're in the business of marketing. Like you are Mm -hmm. a marketer, is what I see. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, you're right. I think you're sensing that correctly. I, Caitlin and I have a really great dynamic in that how you just described me, that's very much my role. And I am very passionate about holistic living, but I'm also passionate about business and marketing and a following and seeing, creating that. And, you know, that's really rewarding to me. And Caitlin's background is heavy into herbalism, wellness. And so we complement each other really nicely in those, in those aspects. She's more of the creative, um, you know, she created the cancer wand you're speaking of. I had really nothing to do with creating that. (laughs) <laughs> maybe the like emails or Instagram uh, ads behind it. Yes. But she's the one really like making things really beautiful. So um, we're lucky to have that kind of dynamic. So I would, I would go, okay, I'm looking at your Instagram. You got over a hundred thousand followers on Instagram, which is probably my guess is a huge, like a huge platform for you uh, compared to, you know, any other, other platforms. Um, how did you do this? Like, this is a significant business. Like how did this happen? Talk to the people out there that are making candles in their kitchen who are, you know, dreaming of like their ceramic items being all over the globe and having wholesale. Like, yeah, yeah. Well, it's like probably not the answer that everyone wants to hear, but just like endless work. (laughs) Um, I want to say like, oh, it was just all easy and everything fell into place. And, but I, I think having the, what was, important is there was passion behind our project. We're really passionate and we were ready to work as hard as it took. So a lot of hard work and a lot of um, strategic work and 
a lot of long nights is what it took. But yeah, but I mean, obviously Instagram can be the best thing and, you know, 107,000 followers is great. And we're so happy with that. And we were so, so stoked when that number hit. Um, but it can also be, as I'm sure so many listeners know, exhausting. And it can also be, it can mean nothing. You know, there, there were times like when we had 30,000 or 40,000 followers where engagement was so real and like, we were getting, you know, huge numbers on our posts. And then now we have 107,000 followers and sometimes, and oftentimes it's less than that. So, you know, we're kind of at a space where this is just starting to happen. Like, okay, Instagram has been, we've been really lucky with Instagram. We put a ton of work behind it and being as authentic. I swear, like the algorithms are smarter than any of us. They know how you feel when you post, you know, how much effort you put in, you know, it's like, you have to, it's, it's like a, it's, yeah, it's hard to predict. So, um, as great as that number is, it can also be very challenging. <laughs> sure, sure. Um, but yeah, you have to work hard and, and we're learning that, um, Instagram is not the end all be all. And no matter how many followers you have, like other channels are so important. What, um, how much of your uh, traffic is coming from paid uh, traffic versus organic? So we have been, uh, our D2C channel has been, our direct-to-consumer channel has been uh, all organic for the last, I um, mean, you know, we are just starting ads uh, like last month, basically, last month and a half. So it's been all organic. Um, and and uh, the majority of our traffic up to this point has come from Instagram, but also direct, um, you know, Google searches and things like that. And we do put some effort behind email marketing. Um, but yeah, we haven't done a ton of ads because it's also been a little bit harder for us um, to run ads. We have in the past, or like my, my past project, I ran ads in the past and ran into some roadblocks when it comes to um, smoking products, you know, no one likes that. No one wants to <laughs> advertise, um, pipes or anything like that. So that we've kind of been organic out of necessity, but it also worked out fine for us. Uh, talk to those people who are just wanting to start an online business and they've got their product. They've got their thing mm-hmm. that they've made. They, it looks amazing. It feels amazing, whatever it is. What yeah. Are, what do they need to do in order to start selling that thing online? Yeah, I think, and I have people and family members ask me this too, like, where do you start? And I, I would say like, for anyone who's thinking about starting an online business, I would ask yourself some questions like why you want to start an online business, because the why behind that will send you down two routes. Like if it's something for, to be fulfilling and a creative outlet, then I would recommend something like Etsy. And I used to, when we started, we started out on Etsy. um, And I used to get so annoyed by the commission that they would take. And now that we're, (laughs) now that I've like zoomed way out and, you know, we have our website and we have different channels. I'm like, oh my gosh, I would kill to pay 15% for all the stuff they do. Like, Um, So I think sometimes Etsy gets a bad rap because it's like crafty or maybe people don't see it as a real storefront, but it's, it's so amazing for someone who wants a creative outlet or a side hustle and this, and the why behind, I want to start a business is, oh, it would be nice to do something from home. And um, that was fulfilling. Um, If the why is I want to really, you know, make money at this and do this on my own and scale the business. Uh, my advice would be get ready to work really hard. And um, there's a, oftentimes I think I wish I would have done this sooner. And a couple of those things are um, hiring help for the website. Um, we're smack everything. We've done everything on our own up to this point. Um, and we're smacked out in the middle of having a uh, close friend redo everything, our brand story and our website. Because one thing I wish I would have started with was a really cohesive brand story. Because while Caitlin and I know why we're doing this and what's behind it, 
That is such a roadmap for every decision you make in your business, like Mm -hmm. how you talk to your customer, how you post, where you post. It it bleeds into everything. And I think when I started out, I thought, yeah, right. Like I need a brand story right now. We're just starting. We're like, we need to go to pop-ups. We need to sell, sell, sell. And, And it seemed like, oh yeah, only real brands do that. But if if you, the why is I want to be a real brand that scales and I want people, you know, to know who we are, I would absolutely say invest or do it yourself if you have that in you. Create what your brand story is and who your customer is and how you want to talk to them and how you want them to receive you because it will absolutely bleed into every decision you make. Mm. So that's resources? one of the things I would say. No, that's great. And I, any resources that have helped you along the way in terms of like books or podcasts or, you know, certain, I don't know, courses or, you know, anything that comes to your mind? As a business owner, are you struggling with overwhelm, self-doubt, or procrastination? Well, if you listen to many experts, the number one way to rewire your brain is through meditation. And yet many of the people that I work with are passionate entrepreneurs who struggle to sit still long enough to even calm down their brain. Well, I've recently discovered the power of color flow meditation. It's a paint and play experience to help you rediscover the joy of business. My friend Super K and I want to invite you to a free one-hour workshop called Painting Your Way to Your Purpose, Passion, and Superpower. We're hosting it live on Wednesday, September 22nd, 2021 at 9 a.m. Pacific Time, 12 noon Eastern via Zoom. It's absolutely free, but you do need to save your spot at www.paintingyourway.live. That's paintingyourway.live. The link is in the show notes. Hope to see you there. Totally. Um, I will often listen to podcasts, um, especially when it comes to marketing, because you can read a book and then next week, none of it matters. Or you, you're oftentimes read articles or marketing books. And then I scroll up and I'm like, oh my God, this is from 2014. Like, what am I doing? You know, I've like, I've come up with all these ideas around Instagram and it's based on like years ago. So um, I will, I will always like, I swear every quarter I'm like, okay, I've got to hear what, uh, you know, there's some people I go to, like there, there's a lot, I will search for podcasts and I Shopify always gives great ones. Their Shopify experts are always great. Um, I'll tap into like Jenna Kutcher or podcasts like yours just to hear what other, um, business owners are doing. But yeah, so I often listen to podcasts. That's like one of my main resources because while I have a sales and marketing background, I have, I did not go to business school. I went to school for lots of different things that I will probably never end up doing. Um, and so I don't, most of what I've learned is from other resources and podcast books and, but always make sure they're current before you invest too much time. <laughs> um, but yeah, so, and, and another great resource um, is I have been a part of a couple groups where it's just like-minded business owners or, there's a couple of them. That's one of the names. And so it's kind of a nice forum where you can kind of hear what people are talking about using. But honestly, just if you want to start a business, you will be doing so and you don't have a business background, you will be. And even if you do have a business background, you will be doing so much research and just figuring it out. And I'm still figuring it out. <laughs> so talk to me about um, wholesale. Did you begin with that opportunity like wholesale or is that something that's come later in life, later in the business? Yeah, kind of both. We started out, um, uh, in, we had, when we started, we had a handful of stores around the Bay Area, the people we knew, people we had met at pop-ups and things like that. And so it was a really small part of our business. Um, but actually since the pandemic, it's kind of like taken over and it's been the majority part of our business, Really, um, which is really interesting. Yeah, it, it's interesting because that's when we merged is like we merged and then March happened and we were like, you know, March (laughs) the beginning. And we were like, Oh my goodness. And at that point I was moving down to focus solely on this online business that uh, I think our year, you know, before we merged, we had made a couple thousand dollars the first year. Um, So that was really scary, (laughs) you know, like we weren't ready for it, but it was interesting to see how the pandemic actually it was kind of a perfect moment for us because people were spending so much time at home 
and and so much time thinking about themselves and their health and what they're even doing, like what does anything mean anymore? And so I think it pushed a lot of people to look inward and to take self-care more um, seriously. So the stars aligned for us and our wholesale business really grew, which we weren't expecting. We were expecting maybe our online um, direct uh, channel to succeed more that people were working remotely and had time to shop and whatever. But it was interesting to see that business owners were more interested and we were getting more um, orders than ever. And there's a couple, and and I attribute some of that to, um, we had really sad, we have savvy retailers that went online right away and knew exactly what they were doing. And then we had some that weren't and, and are luckily coming back. But another huge thing that pushed our wholesale up was working with third party sites like um, fair abound bulletin. Um, those have done incredibly well for us. So if anyone is wondering, like, how do I grow my wholesale business? I would absolutely start there because like I said before with Etsy, I it used to drive me crazy that 15% that they would take. Um, and you're going to see that on these third party sites but I know what I was doing before and it is so worth 15%, if not more, because you're invoicing, you're following up. It's just a huge process um, and it, it's time consuming. So that yeah. helped us a lot because FAIR has streamlined everything Bulletin has, you know, it's, it's really helped. So on these third party websites, uh, a, a retailer will order your product and they'll mm-hmm. pay the third party website. Yeah. And then they'll just take a percentage and then you guys ship it to the retailer. Exactly. So we get order. It's just like, it is almost, it's just like Etsy. Really. It really is. Mm -hmm. You load your stuff up on the site. I mean, some, some, some product, uh, some websites, excuse me, have an approval process. So um, we actually got declined. I, (laughs) we got declined by fair when we applied for the first time. Um, But then they ended up reaching out to us later. So we were like, okay, good. so it's not, it's not, you won't get on all of them. Um, but if you can or start the process and ask, okay, if you're declined, why it was, I think for us, it was our images weren't high quality enough. Mm. Um, but yeah, so basically you have this website that you log into and this is where retailers are shopping. Like every retailer knows what fair is, at least fair. Some know abound and some know bulletin. Um, but everyone pretty much, fair is like the Amazon of wholesale at this point. So that's where retailers are shopping and it's super convenient for them because they can shop for the season. They can say, okay, self-care items, or we want to have a heavy focus on this. They plug that into fair and then brands that, uh, you know, are going to be good for their store and their customers will pop up. Um, They just submit the order there. We print it, ship it, and fair takes care of all the billing and the support and they're excellent. Wow. I've yeah. Never, I, I, because I'm not in that industry. I actually had not heard of that, but that sounds amazing. I'm going to check out those websites. Yeah. Um, it's smart. a no brainer for any product based business, in my opinion. I mean, there's some, like you mentioned ceramicists earlier and I like, my heart is so heavy for them because they work so hard and it takes the time that they put behind their product um, is so crazy to me. And so it's, that is hard to scale um, unless you have help. So I say most product-based businesses, but you will get business on that. So you have to be prepared. Got to be ready. If you're yeah, on that yeah, site. Yeah. There's That's lots awesome. of retailers looking. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Okay. So people want to check out litrituals.com. And of course your Instagram is lit rituals. And so we'll put yes. all those links in the show notes. And uh, Christina, I am very impressed with what you've been able to pull off. So good. And um, thank you. May it continue to, burn up. Oh, that did not. <laughs> well, I'm trying to use the metaphor there. May it continue to light a fire. May it continue ignite. To, <laughs> may, there we go. May it continue to ignite. Good stuff. I have to ask you a question now though, before we Let's do it. <laughs> what's, what's your sign? I didn't get your sign. Uh, I'm a Pisces. Oh, a Pisces. Very cool. Yeah. I don't know Intuitive. much. Intuitive. I don't know enough, you know, I don't know a lot about horoscope stuff. What does that tell you about me? Um, well, you're, well, let's see if I'm right. You're, you're more intuitive. People are comfortable talking to you and sharing things with you. 
Um, maybe you're a dreamer. Does that sound right? Both those things are true. Yeah. Yeah. You can see the beauty in a lot of things that other people probably struggle with seeing. So I, I love Pisces. I think they're a great sign. I'm a Leo, so I'm probably the opposite of a Pisces. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but um, uh, yeah, I like, I have, I have some very special Pisces friends. So. Very fun. Very fun. Well, it's good to meet you. And thanks for sharing your wisdom and experience today. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Hey, congrats on listening to another episode of Inspiration Rising. Why congrats? Because you're pouring education and inspiration into your mind and heart. And that's something we all need if we're going to grow our businesses and reach our goals in life. Now, if you enjoy Inspiration Rising, do us a favor, share it with a friend, take a screenshot of your favorite episode and text it to them. Tell them to search for Inspiration Rising on their favorite podcast app and click subscribe. I want you to know today that you're inspired, empowered, and loved. Not because of the way you feel or what anyone else says about you, but because that's your true identity.